Star Roachy, I'm looking for you, young man. I am trying to find you. I thought I was gonna have a call with you. John was gonna set it up for Sunday. And David Taylor, I'm gonna give you a little bit of time. And you're gonna be hearing from me as well. David Taylor is ranked the number one wrestler on earth, not in the country. Could you imagine being the best in the country? Could you even imagine being the best in your state? I never was. I wanted to be my whole life. I ended up second. Now, once you take over your state, you know what country means? All that land that Joe Biden's in charge of, you're in charge of that same land when it comes to the sport of wrestling. All of America. I talked about being a state champion. You were the national champion. What that signifies is that your parents could move and live in any state in America and you will be the champion. That is what it means. Your parents could move and you could go to any high school in the United States and you will be the starting athlete. Any high school, doesn't matter where. That's what national champion means. David Taylor was not only ranked to be number one in the country, he was ranked number one in the world, which means he could move to any country in the world and be their champion. If it was Olympic year, no matter where he lived, if he had a passport and citizenship, he would be the Olympian. Could you imagine? Could you imagine that kind of success? And David Taylor, like so many others, stayed in the game until the right thing happened, which is he passed the torch. Very few Olympic champions stick around. And nobody questions them. And I'm talking about the greats. I'll throw Brandon Slay in there. The greats. Very few of them stick around. They did what they set out to do. But Taylor stuck around. Do Weiler do what he's already set out to do one more time? Or until somebody could take it. And he happened to pass it to his teammate. To his training partner to his fellow Nittany Lion. And the question becomes, what is David Taylor going to do now? Now, I want you to just hold that thought, okay? Bo Nickel left wrestling and came over to MMA because of David Taylor. Bo Nickel, who is not Mr. Compliment to anybody, and it's not out of being arrogant, it's out of he's trying to beat everybody. He's a very competitive guy. Well, openly tell you, there was no point in staying in wrestling if David Taylor was there. So I had to go and do something different. Now, that's an interesting story. I think that's a fascinating story. There is also a backstory between Taylor and Nickel that if they choose to tell. And I share that story with you because if you're David Taylor and you're 31 years old and you have no MMA, but you got a heck of a resume. Can you come over and can you get right into the Ultimate Fighting Championship? Because there's no time to waste for David Taylor. And generally, the answer is no. Generally. But Kayla Harrison would have been welcomed. BJ Penn, as the first ever American to win a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu World Championship, was welcomed. Clarissa Shields was welcomed. It's happened before. And the only reason I touch on David Taylor and Bo Nickel and them having a little something, the only reason I touch on that, that's between those boys if they want to bring that up, but the only reason I touch on that, that's the way Taylor's going to cut the line. That's the way for sure David Taylor cuts the line. I set up the conference call, we jump on, here's the issue, and here's why. And I'm coming over, and I'm coming in the same weight class. That is more likely than not a story they don't want out. And I bring Carter Storochi into this. I couldn't be more impressed with this guy. This is my kind of guy. Carter Storochi is the most entertaining wrestler that the NCAA has sanctioning over. He is the most entertaining wrestler, and I'm, I'm talking about entertaining, that Kale Sanderson has ever had to deal with because he is very off-brand, and there's no chance. You want to know what... Why Kale's final hairs are gone? His final hairs are gone because of Carter Sorochi. <laughs> but he gets it. Coach Sanderson loves him. He gets it. He understands the entertainment. But I'm just sharing with you, like, it, it is a, a different kind of mindset. And what is Sorochi going to do? 
He has massive dollar amounts being thrown at him right now. Right now. I'll give you one. $400,000. And all he's got to do is wrestle postseason next year for the Division I in an attempt to win a fifth title. In an attempt to win a tournament that he's already won four times. Or, if it's strictly a business move, he would have to ask himself, do I believe if I take the or, if I do something else, can I make more than $400,000? That's what he would have to ask himself, purely from a business standpoint. Now, from an intrinsic value and being part of history, staying right there in State College and doing it with the guys he did with, like, Carter Starochi is in a very awesome position. But it comes with tremendous risk. There is a tremendous risk there if you fail to do something that you've already succeeded in doing four other times. Now, if anybody likes risk, it's Starochi. But as we do look forward and we look at Team USA, we look at what happened with the Olympic trials. I was, I was so angry, red hot angry. I did my level best to find out who this person was. I got a video of him. But then when I saw that the internet had already found him and put, uh, I, okay, that's enough. But there was a gentleman who was in the crowd that yelled and heckled Jordan Burroughs after Jordan lost to Jason Alf. Jordan followed all of the rules. He shook hands and walked away. He was not a bad sport. He was not negative. He did not cheat. He did not try to do anything outside of the rules. And I couldn't believe that he was being booed. I couldn't believe that he was being heckled. And in that moment, we all believed that was our last time seeing Jordan Burroughs. Jordan did not make that official. He still has not made that official. And perhaps we've got it wrong. And perhaps he isn't done. But I'm, I'm sharing with you, in that moment, we all believed it was. And there was somebody that thought they should put salt in the wound. And I did not understand that. And I watched... Aaron Brooks versus Zahid was one of the great matches. Brooks ran him down. Zahid is a great competitor, and Brooks is a better competitor. I can't tell you who the better wrestler is. These guys are, are both just exceptional. Exceptional. Zahid, at this point, got NCAA titles. He's also got a world medal. Brooks has more. NCAA titles, now he's earned a shot in an Olympic medal, but he doesn't have it yet. These guys are very special. With a number of seconds left, a referee ruled that Zahid had pulled Brooks' singlet, which cost Zahid a point. And Zahid had the option to throw the brick back and not take a look at review or leave the brick in and take a look at it. He threw the brick back. Now, It's not a matter of did he pull the singlet. It's a matter of do they have a camera that picked him up pulling the singlet, right? If he is to fight this in protest, they must have the correct angle. And that's been tested. Even if it was under a different jurisdiction, Suriano versus Fix overtime on the headgear. It's got to be the right angle. So you would leave the brick. You would see if they got the footage. But Zahid didn't do it. He knew if he threw that brick back, he was going to lose the match, but he also knew in his heart whether they have the footage or not. I pulled the singlet. You're not allowed to do it. He threw the brick back. Cost himself the match. With how Zahid making that decision, it is not a guarantee that Brooks even goes into the finals, beats Taylor, makes the team. And if we revisit this in 108 days, which is when the wrestling will be contested, if Brooks is an Olympic champion, he's going to have to tie all of that back to the moment that Zahid threw the brick back because he knew in his heart he had pulled the singlet. And there was a lot of things that came out of these trials. There was lots and lots of them. But for any infraction or injustice that Zahid has ever done, that if you're a true fan you know about and you're clinging to, that slate is wiped clean. 